Hello everyone and thank you, thank you so much. This is Rodney with Ordinary People with a Godly Purpose. Let's talk. And we are here today, Rodney and Dawn. It's not if we're not no co-partners, it's Rodney and Dawn. Ordinary people with a godly purpose. Let's talk. And we are here today on Thursday. I'm glad that everybody's tuning in. Dawn, how was your day? It was wonderful. It was it was um it was productive. Um it was um it was a good product productivity. It was really good. That, well, that's great. Complain. That's great. You, you shouldn't complain because ain't nothing you can do about it, right? So make it work for you. What? You are yeah. so true. That is so true. Yes. And I just um, want to tell everyone to continue to like our show. Continue to like myself, Rodney, and Dawn's show because this is our show. And <laughs> we want you to like this show. And also, you know, I didn't say last time, folks, but I want you to go out and also listen to John, Dawn's podcast. Dawn has a wonderful podcast that's on her with her books. And you need to listen to that podcast because it spins off on what we're doing here. Ordinary yes. people with a godly purpose, let's talk. And then you have Dawn's podcast where she goes into more things about what she does. So tune in, tune in, tune in, tune in. <laughs> Ronnie, they can catch that podcast on any um, podcast um, platform like iTunes, um, Spotify, places like that. Um, just look up Discovery House. You'll see me with the pink and purple house. <laughs> okay, y'all heard it. That's not Prince's house, y'all. That's not Prince's house. <laughs> no. This is Dawn's house. No. This yep. is Dawn's, okay? And might a hashtag on there that says Dawn of the Day. Okay, you get the hashtag, all right? Because yeah, I know y'all yeah. Prince fans out there with the Purple House and all that stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, you don't be acting like y'all don't know nothing about Prince. Y'all know about <laughs> Prince, all right? So, hey, let's get into the show. Ordinary people with a godly purpose, let's talk. And we're going to be talking tonight about angels. Do they live among us? And I have a... Um, something that happened to me many years ago and I don't know if uh, some of you can relate to it some of you might not be relate to it but I used to sell cable door to door in Philadelphia uh, in West Philly for all you Philadelphia uh, natives out there and I was on the street it was a winter it was winter time and I was walking down the street and my wife beat me because at that, that particular time there was no phones we had beepers yeah I'm showing my age so I'm on this beeper and I go to a pay phone a pay phone y'all got me a pay phone so I go to this pay phone and my wife says hey Rodney what are you doing I said honey I only got two more people I need to go see she said you know what you need to get off the streets it's Friday night I had $2,500 of cash on me because people wanted their cable back on so anyhow I said honey I'm coming home soon well, to make a long story short, I went up to this house and I knocked on the door. It's about eight o'clock at night and I peeked in and had these white sheets all over the house. And I didn't know what the white sheets was about. I just figured that, you know, they're covering up their furniture. Well, anyway, so you're this... telling me, Rodney, wait a minute. You okay. said that you, was, that you was on somebody's porch that was spooky? Well, it was not really spooky. But but what it was okay, I'm the, 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 it, it was spooky to a way. It, but actually, Dawn, it was kind of spooky. But the lady comes to the door, right? Right, Dawn. The uh -huh. lady comes to the door, and she says, "You're not from around here." Uh huh. And I says, "No, ma'am, I'm not." She says, "You need to go home." So yeah. she closes the door, and the next morning, I got up, went back to that uh -huh. same area because uh -huh. I wanted to start fresh, and uh -huh. there was a for sale sign on the lawn uh -huh. I knocked on next door's neighbor and the neighbor said no one's lived in the house for three weeks oh wow uh oh for so three it wasn't nothing weeks it was, it, was, it was God he sent an angel that's what you can get into today that he sent an angel there you go. to protect you and to tell you to get up out of there get up out of there girl with the quickness yeah. get up out of there yeah. And I say that because a lot of people don't realize that we have um, protectors mm -hmm. around us. Mm -hmm. and, and we sometimes forget about these protectors. We sometimes don't see them unless something really tragic happens in our lives. And that particular moment, 
I could have, you know, I could have got stabbed. I could have got shot. I could, whatever. But this lady says, you need to go home. But there yeah. was nobody living there, Don. Yeah. Not a soul. Yeah. So, what type that of... Bring, go that ahead. brings me to, to talk about, to add to that, about how we as a people self-sabotage ourselves, even in the kingdom. See? Um, I was about to do it, girl. I was about to do it. If that lady didn't tell me to get out of there, I would have self sabotaged myself. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that sometimes, you know, we we so smart that we can sometimes be dumb and naive, or we see what we want to see. And oftentimes, it's lessons to be learned out of everything. I don't care if it's a flower. It's something to be learned, but if you don't have the eye to see, then you can't see certain things, or if you don't want to see it. So a lot of times we self-sabotage ourselves when we end up being in spaces or in events that, um, that don't do us well, don't cause us to thrive. And I'm, I love the fact that you use that um, the um, situation that you were in because how many times have we been traveling our day-to-day thing and um, we would say something told us not to do this or something told us to turn this way and have we not listened? something catastrophic could have happened and then there's times when people didn't listen and something did happen exactly what I say to say is that um oftentimes because we can't get past ourselves we tend to um cause a lot of sabotage on our own right and we don't even realize we're doing it because we think we wouldn't do that to ourselves and oftentimes when we're dysfunctional and you don't want to see when functionality comes it feels like it's dysfunctional so you'll push it away instead of telling you something that's going to help you to thrive so it was really um i appreciate the fact that you said that today because it just helped me dial into how we self-sabotage ourselves in so many ways in our relationships because anytime you're in a relationship again when you start off when you meet people you're a unit when you come together and you start communing together you put a Y to that it's unity and when you're not um intentional about um, pouring into that unit so it can be, become unity you kind of self-sabotage some things that, that can have helped you flourish in life so relationships break down whether they're um, man and woman or friendships or what have you or family members they break down because you forget the, what the ingredient to keep it and make it go into unity we, we, we forget that and so we sabotage the things that we really want everybody wants to have um, effective um, um, life giving relationships and often time we can't do that because we won't get past ourselves Rodney and that's true because relationship starts within ourselves in order mm-hmm. to have relationships with others we have to have relationships with ourselves first and without that we have nothing in it. and again the relationship I had with my wife telling me to leave, I was self sabotaging myself because I never, I, I didn't feel like leaving. I, I want to get so, those so last so right. two. Mm-hmm. So right. That was the second warning because your wife told you first. That's right. And then, then when you went to the lady, the Lord, see, this is how the grace and mercy of God come on us and He can still protect us even in our foolery. That's right. You got on that porch, the lady told you again, and then now, now they're telling you. So this is moments, too. This is a lesson, too, that God is still um, here with us when we hear testimonies about things that happen like that. Because people don't think that God sends um, different, um, even angels to come and tell us to get away. And because we don't see that often, um, or what we choose not to see it often, we equate it to something else. Some, uh, that, that couldn't happen. Yes, it could. We put God in the box all the time. You know, um, an angel could come in the form of a person. That's you right. Know, but because they don't look like somebody that we would normally talk to, we automatically cancel them out. So it's a lot of times we canceled a lot of the blessings that God, when he came and seen about us, we canceled them out because it didn't look like what we think it should. And that should show us how often we put him in a box and think it's supposed to be a way that we understand it. But he said that his way is not our way. But in all our ways, we need to acknowledge him. So if I'm acknowledging by asking God to make sure that I can see well um, when I'm looking at everything in my life or as I'm traveling, then I won't miss him in those little pockets that I don't think he will come at. Because my mentality, until I unlearn and relearn, uh, my sight can't change fully. Mm-hmm. But I like what you just said, Dawn. You said cancel him out. Cancel, cancel him out. out. 
How do we, we, we how do we cancel, cancel though? How do we cancel? Because you know what, cancel is a big word. Good, right. but that's a big word. A big word. We, we cancel out what he's trying to do in our life because we don't we're not comfortable when what he said with, with how he's doing it, mm -hmm. right? Or we put him in a box and we can't get him out that box because God is not a box God. Mm -hmm. So we put we'll put him in our own little box, which it enables us from not being able to hear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or he be, be able to see things. That's right. We put him in the box. And so we act like that outside of that box that we, the, our thought pattern toward him, that's all he can do. When he can do so many other things far past what we can think mm -hmm. or see. But when we put him in that box, we cancel him out. Just like a, a room when you're trying to um, uh, record something and you have those soundproof uh, walls. Right. We can't do that to God. In the, in the spirit you know what i'm saying we we soundproof our our walls and our souls so he can't come in and really give us the meat of what we need um and, and, and instruct us because it don't sound like what we think it should i like that i like the way you did that, that analogy that you just gave that soundproof room and you, uh -huh. you, it's it's just like the uh, person in the glass house uh -huh. when you cast uh -huh. those stones in that glass house and then yeah. that, that leads us right back to that sabotage that it's I mean, so, I mean, so, I mean. This, if we look back, and we can't go back and woulda, coulda, shoulda. What we do is we learn moving forward, so we won't be a habitual, habitual offenders, and, and um, keep ourselves in a penitentiary life when we don't have to. Mm -hmm. But we should be praying and asking God to help us to be able to see and hear, like He would like us to, because the, your hearing and your sight is portals of entry to your soul. That's why you gotta be careful about what you're listening to. And you also got to be careful about what you're looking at, because it all kind of goes, coincides with what was feeding and driving us, because our soul is like the coal or whatever to keep our engine rolling. And when we don't have the coal is not built up or it's not on fire, we can't move like God wants us to. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And also your conscience is like a mirror. So when people don't have a conscience, when they do things, you have nothing to reflect to the soul. You know what I mean? But that's all and about so, that sabotaging of that spirit, that coal and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's why we have to keep things in the world. That's so right. When we start when we start talking about, um, like I was talking to some young men at work um the other day, mm -hmm. and when I was talking to them, um, I was just telling them how you know I you I exempt I, I erase your excuse that you don't know the truth because I've shared it with you. Right. Now, now, now you want a different umbrella than, than everybody else. And the way you come in your ministry with God or your connection with God or any other person is different. We it peculiar is. people. We don't supposed to be like everybody else. But yet we try to mirror ourselves like everybody else and it doesn't work. So we end up being tired. We end up messing some stuff up, sabotaging ourselves because it doesn't work for who we are. Because we don't know how to be. So we can learn how to not sabotage ourselves so we can embrace the ingredient that he created us to be because it don't supposed to be like anybody else but because we think that um it's a our minds in the world have taught us that this is the definition of this that and so who said that who <laughs> made up these rules you know what i mean and so I we do. follow these rules and we don't even know who made them up it's just because that's right the power influences that everybody does it in the meantime when you gauging your life toward other things that don't resonate who you are then you get you begin to shrink you begin to sabotage yourself and now you're trying to swim if you will um in a in a um in a pool or an ocean right. um, that was never made for you you know what i mean That's you weren't right. supposed to be in that pond so now you're trying to get your breath and, and get up out of there but if you had to listen mm -hmm. or whatever paid attention and went against could see our thoughts can hurt us or they can work for us if you know that your thoughts don't add up to what God's will is for your life, or what the book says, then why are we following the compass of that? that that's because some of our thoughts are distorted, which will sabotage us. Because we're not thinking right toward the situation, because we are oftentimes ego-driven. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah. You, can't, you can't mix ego in your life and think it ain't going to sabotage you. Mm -hmm. Because now it ain't about what you know or whatever. Now it's about what you feel. And, and in your infirmity that's it ain't right. about with facts you know that's and so right. we gonna deal with facts 
And the fact is, is that God don't want us to sabotage ourselves. But the, the reality is, is that we often do because we need to be denouncing some things that we have acquired in our travels, like feeling like we're not adequate or feeling like we don't have power over ourselves because of our travels. Those things are small, small, subtle things that become big things that sabotage our life. And if we do not stop doing that, then you will not have the life that you wanted. And time will pass, and prayerfully you'll get to a space in your life of elder to be an elder, and then you're looking back wishing, could have, should have, for no reason because you missed your moment. And you know what, that brings me up to the point that... um you know, it, d before you can get to the, the sabotage part, well, because it, 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 it can hit you pretty fast. The, you always have these protectors that are around you from the um, from from angels to um, people that are looking out for your well interests. But you get all these signs, you know, that the old uh, the old saying was um, uh, the man was on the boat and the boat, the boat stopped. And he said, God, God will save me. So God sent out this boat and the boat came and the man was like, no, no, God's going to still save me. And then he threw out a raft and, and, and God. So the man got to heaven. And he's, yeah, it, it, exactly. Exactly. He said, I said, how many warnings do you need? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, we do that. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it, it, I have a lot to do with different situations, right? So some of the family heirlooms that we've given, you know, if your family was plagued with um, with uh, um, dishonesty or they was plagued with masking things and acting like things are not there and not facing things, then you adopt that same theology because you got to remember it's in your bloodline. But the fact is, until you see it in your bloodline and you act like it won't happen to you unless you denounce it, you're going to sabotage yourself. Ooh, so it's a lot of families like that's that. broken down. It, it, that's what happens. If the families are broken down. People are broken down because they don't know how to be in relationship. I'm talking about true relationship. Because oftentimes you'll see superficial relationships. I want you to see just a part of me. I don't want to see, I want you to see all of me. Because when you start seeing all of me and you question some things, it makes me uncomfortable. So I'm going to stay away from you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas those questions is the ones that's promoting you to come up to do better. It's putting a demand on you. Because anybody that's in your life that's, that's, that's causing you to be to thrive or there's some sort of fertilizer to you, supposed to question certain things in your life. And when you gotta hide, that's because you're not ready to get rid of the sabotage. You know what I mean? Exactly. You're robbing yourself of something good, anything worth having, whether it's relationships, whether it's a career, whatever, you have to work at it. And when you don't work at it and you only work at it in pockets that make you comfortable, then you're still sabotaging because you're not getting the fullness of what you could have had with people. You know what I mean? And that's sad because people often don't see the devil in themselves. They see it in other people. And if your behavior is mirroring the same behavior that you complained about with others, then when do you find out that you're sabotaging yourself? When do you, but well, you got to be reflective to see that. Yeah. And if it is reflective, it will be less sabotage and more thriving. Yeah, and you're not going to get all, t don't get me wrong, folks. Um, what Dawn is saying is, is great. But you're not going to get warnings all the time. Dawn is telling you that. I'm no. telling you that. And these warnings don't always come when you want them to come. Because God's going to give you the warning way before then. <laughs> True that. But you know what? It, the fact is, is that it ain't always a warning. But it's signs and stuff. But see, that's to tell you what integrity your insides are like. When you can't hear something harking and you just fall back. Or when, you, when your conscience don't tell you that that's wrong. So when your conscience is malfunctioning, you got a problem now. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. When you can do things, when you can do things, and again, because I tell you that con conscience is like a mirror. It hits your, it hits your soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it causes a reaction to it. But when your conscience is not working properly, then it'll cause you to ca cross all kind of lines. Lines. It will cause you to use unethical things as you as you travel this world, and then you'll justify it because you did. It. And when you can lie to yourself, you can lie to anybody. I like you know that. I, mean? that. I like that. that. What do you mean that, by that, that justified, um, Dawn? How, how you justify? How do you justify something that you're making uh, in your mind that may not be true? Right. So just let's talk about people that have mental health problems. Oh, okay. All right. Let's go there. Let's go there, sis. 
let's go there. I just want to say, let's go there. Let's go there. Right. So the thing is with mental health, if somebody that's um, having a mental um, breakdown or an episode, I don't care what you tell them. If they say there's five marshes in the yard, you can sit up there and tell them all day there's no five y- marshes in the yard. You can't tell them nothing because they see what they see. Right? Right. Right. So if I can't tell them something, me telling them that it's not because I see something else, they're going to look at me like I'm the one that's having a problem. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I'm that's laughing at you right, right now. You know I'm laughing at you, right? Because right? <laughs> you always call me Farming Bill. You call me Farming Bill at work, so I'm not laughing. Farming Bill, right? Farming Bill. So, uh, <laughs> so if, if people, if, if I can't tell you what's going on, then that's just like when we're teaching people or we are we facilitating things or we're giving a message across. You can't tell people how to process things. But if your processing and your sight keep working against you, that is a sign from God right there to tell you that you shouldn't trust your sight or your, your thoughts fully until they come in alignment with what with, with, with is true. And that means that you need to be intentional, you need to be practicing it, and you also need to be under somebody that can help you get that part of your life under discipline. I like that alignment. I like you know? that alignment. So the thing is, is that if you, if, well, anything that's out of alignment ain't going to work properly. That's right. You know what I mean? Reg- regardless, regardless how many, night, yeah, regardless how many, how many, regardless how many spirits or entities come into your life folks yeah yeah if you're out of alignment it's just mm-hmm. like your car you're gonna mm-hmm. pull to the left or you're gonna pull to yeah. the right <laughs> yeah or just like my bike if i'm riding my bike and my chain slip am i going somewhere no i can scoop but why would i do that when i just can sit down and take the time out to put the chain back on the track like it's supposed to be okay there's another word for y'all tonight y'all that scoop we had ratchet now we got scoop we got scoot. We scoot today. We, we scoot. No more. After the show, we go. We got scoot. No We're more. We're not more scooting. No, we're gonna be more intentional about not being afraid to go in them places that we have caused affliction on ourselves. That's right. You know what I mean? I like that's, that. That's how we get better. And you shouldn't feel bad about that. If you if you're gonna feel bad about it, feel bad that you're choosing to stay that way. You're choosing to rob yourself of love. You're choosing to rob yourself of of unity. Not just being in, in a unit with somebody, but unity. There's a difference. Because when I first meet you, we're in unit. But when we get to know each other and we're intentional about expounding on that, then we become unity. And there's a difference. We rob ourselves of those things. We rob ourselves of blessings that God has given us. Uh, what happened? We rob ourselves of that because it don't look the way we want to, or it doesn't make us feel comfortable, or it causes us to stretch, or it causes us to denounce some things that we've carried that does not work well for us in this season that we're in. It's against us. Some of our behavior is against us, but we will keep on with the behavior because it's comfortable, but we understand that on the inside, you know you're not winning, but you rather just keep going on like that instead of being real diligent about it just like when you gotta you you gotta die you know the only way you're gonna see the effects of it the good part of it is what you gotta do you gotta discipline yourself so you gotta be intentional about the things that cause you to trigger so you won't work against yourself we do that all the time i like that we blame everybody else we blame everybody yep. else. we blame my history we blame our work we blame everybody else but all nobody has the power over you to control how you show up and how you receive information but you but and you know what that goes talking. back that goes back exactly to what you said which we um i stated in the very beginning you know mm-hmm. I, I was i knew it was time for me to get out of there but mm-hmm. that that's but you know and i already had the warnings and everything but you know i mm-hmm. I, I decided to go on a little further and then god yeah. said you know what <laughs> i'm gonna give you one more warning i already gave you one and that's the yeah. same thing about your body what you were saying about the food and everything else you, well, you self-sabotage I mean, it's yourself it's every, that's the thing about that's the thing about understanding it it goes it don't have to dis- you can understand discipline and food, but discipline is plural. You know what I mean? Self sabotage is plural. It doesn't mean that because I might not be sabotaging myself in this life, this part of my life, this part I am eventually self sabotage is like weed, it's gonna trickle over to the part that I'm not self sabotaging. So then we'll dress things up like you know how women say, Well, maybe it wasn't meant for me to get married. Maybe it wasn't was meant for me. I like that. Right, but I'm just saying, but what if <laughs> when women say, you know, I love being single. Maybe I'm not a married type. Maybe it's not meant for me to get married. Maybe it's not meant for me to have kids. Okay, but what if it was? 
So you gonna rationalize that because you feel like you can't find nobody. But did you ever think about that? Are you preparing yourself to receive something that you really want? Because I don't know no little girl that will grow up as a little girl. You anticipate having your wedding day and having children. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that because we've become, become so um, um, independent in this season uh, or this society right now, we will say things like that. Like I'm basically what you're saying is that in my latter years, I prefer to be lonely. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Um, you know, we, we, that's, we ain't even understanding this, the, the idiotic um, terms that we use, that we put damnation on our future. So basically what you're saying is, in, in, in my latter years, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with being lonely. I'm, I'm okay with not leaving a part of me on this earth. You know what I'm saying? To, to continue on the lineage of my family when you say stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that everybody want to have kids. And I'm not saying everybody want to get married. But a lot of people are saying things like that because it's not happening for them. So they'll just be okay with it. Not saying that it can't happen, mm -hmm. but you're not preparing yourself for it to happen. But you know, you, what, I mean? you know what, Dawn, that brings me up to, um, you know, because what you're saying, it, it, it flows you right into the uh, the story about Sarah. And mm -hmm. Sa Sarah laughed. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't going to be no Sarah. I'm 90 years old, I have no baby. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 she, but what I'm getting at, she laughed because she didn't believe. You know, she and, didn't believe. And that's the same thing you were saying about believing, yeah. um, you know, I should have, would have, but you know, 90 years old, we understand that part, but, yeah. but she didn't believe, she didn't have that right. belief, and she that, sabotaged herself before God could, right. you know, that angel, back to that angel. Yep, but you already canceled yourself out because it don't seem like it's going to happen. And oftentimes, when we're going through life, we'll end up predetermining a situation before it even gets to the end just because of what we see right now. But if my sight is distorted, it's going to me, cause me to prematurely um, sabotage what could have happened for me. Because God always come in the midnight hour most of the time. And then a lot of times, he's already came already. We just got to catch up in time. That's right. And we don't want to do that because it don't look like what we think it should. But again, if we go back to that scripture, my way ain't your way. Mm -hmm. So if my way ain't your way, then let me question my ways and make sure my, my ways and my thoughts are adding up to what he said about me. And he couldn't say in Jeremiah, I got the plans that I have for you, and that's to prosper you, and this, that, and so. Why would he say something like that and then renege on it? He ain't a liar. We are. You know what I mean? So we'll sit there and act like that scripture don't apply to us. That scripture was plural. That means it went for everybody. That's that right. Those the plans that he had for us, and that's to prosper us. Prosperity does not mean finances. Prosperity does not just mean a materialism. Prosperity means your internal self. It's prosperous. Internal. Because when that is under control, when your insides are intact and in alignment with the will of God for your life, everything else will come to you. That's right. And, and that 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 brings me to to the you we got, we got a new segment because I'm going to start this segment today. It's called Dawn's Words. We have sabotage. We have relationship unit. Cancel him out and alignment. Y'all need to write these with the dawn the dawn words. It's not dawn of the day anymore. It's the dawn words. So you 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 will cancel you will cancel yourself out by believing in the sabotage that worked against you. You don't let the angels in because you too uh huh and you don't let the angels in because you're too busy worrying about the relationship you never had. <laughs> the, go ahead. Think about think about our appetites. Our appetites trick us often and you know that sugar thing come on me and I want me a ding dong or a little swinky or something and I know I shouldn't have it, right? Okay, you showing so your age girl is, ding dongs, you showing your age. Right. Okay. <laughs> so the thing is is that I'm up here contemplating whether I should sabotage the work I'm doing to exercise and lose weight, right? Ooh. And so the thing is is that how bad do I really want to lose it? Because when you wanna lose it real bad, you gonna do whatever you gotta do to do the to, um, to make sure it happened. That means I gotta deny myself. I see where you're going. And oftentimes, oftentimes, when we don't deny ourselves of what our appetite, when we know that our appetite is distorted and it's not disciplined, we will follow that appetite mm. and eat off of something that's against us. And then we're wondering why we are sick and we, we're throwing up and we, we can't move because again, when I don't feel good, I don't think right. And when I don't think right, I don't feel good. 
And so oftentimes, we got people around here that look like on the outside that they feel good, but they don't. And so that's the reason why they can't think right. Because if you listen to people or what have you, when they jealous or envious of somebody or whatever, they don't have to say anything. They reveal themselves when they nitpick with people for no reason, when they sit there and judge everything that somebody do. Like, why is that bothering you? Is it is it affecting your money? Is it affecting any of that? We don't ask people questions like that. I don't know. It's just, why are you messing with, why are your hand in my pocket? You know what I mean? Why, am I asking you to pay my bills? No, I'm not. Get your hand on my pocket. Know? <laughs> right. So why are you so interested in how I'm moving and spending my money? What you should be praying for, Lord, please bless her to be a good steward. Bless him to be a good steward. You know what I mean? But other than That's that, right. we get so much in a tizzy over people's stuff. So when you start listening to people, because I'm a dissector with words, you can hear the ailments of what people have going on on the inside. You know what I mean? And I, I've never in my life, and that's what I was sharing too, that, you know, in this part of my life, I'm seeing more than, um, more than ever how even Christians... Um, hold hold up things uh, for people. They make things hard for people. You know, when we don't supposed to be doing that, we supposed to help make the way straight. Not not hold people accountable, but we make things hard because we got stuff mixed up in our own journeys. Jealousy, strife, envy, all of that. You know what I'm saying? All of it. And so when you mix all of that stuff up, you're sabotaging not only others, but you're sabotaging yourself. Because I told you in previous that when you put stuff on the ground, you got to get it back. Right. And we don't even know that the reason why certain things might be held up in our life because we get some things back because of what we did to others. You know what I mean? Sabotaging others because I want you to be great, but I don't want you to be greater than me. Now you know what the devil when it makes you think like that. Because first of all, what God has for you, it ain't like nobody else. So why are you comparing yourself to other people? That's a sabotage because your appetite think it's supposed to be like this. And until we retrain our appetite, our minds and hearts will not be in alignment to follow suit with what is right. And you've been listening to who that girl you did. <laughs> Ordinary people with a godly purpose. Let's talk with Rodney and Dawn. And we are really heated into this topic about sabotages and, and, and listening to your angels and, and most of all, listening to yourself. And yeah, because, this, because this is, people think, people think, people, you got people in your life that God has designated to be like an angelic force in your life. And because it's them and you got an issue with them for no reason. You, for no reason, not not a valid reason. You know what I mean? Because our reasons and stuff. Some of us, if we, we can go to hell for some of our reasons why we got issues with people, we'd be in hell burning up right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the thing is that God has sent angelic people. He sent the spirit of angelic spirit inside of people. Angelic. And he used them as vessels to share with you so you could do better, break generational curses, all of that. But we don't want to do that because it didn't come the way we want to. So now, what's your relationship really like with God when you put him in a box when he can't be contained? Mm. How do you do that? And then you ask him to show up for you, but you already put a sound barrier between you and God. So he can't come in because he doesn't come in but by invitation. So if you lock him out the house, how is he supposed to come in and give you all of this beautiful things like aromas inside your house inside your spirit how is he supposed to engulf you with with knowledge and stuff so you can navigate because the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof so there's nothing in this world that we can't get if we need to do his business or whatever else or be elevated that he wouldn't give us but our capacity won't hold it because we got these sabotaging tendencies Okay, Dawn, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask folks in the comment section, what have you done this week that sabotage is a blessing from God? I want you to write it in the comments, and, and Dawn and I, we're going we're gonna to answer those comments in the, in the comment section this week. What, have you, what, what blessings have you sabotaged that God gave you? And, and you know, it, you just sabo, sabu, sabu. <laughs> so, it, it, and, and put them in the comments, put them in the comments, and we can uh, start a, uh, a questionnaire in the chat on the comments. Yeah. And, and we can, you know, we'll go through this through the whole week 
actually, I mean, all the way to the, the next show. People, at the end of the day, people, it's really about us all getting better. And like I said before, I have not mastered this journey with God. I'm sharing with you the parts of me that I have mastered. And there's some things that you might be able to share with us, but it's not even, it's about us having a conversation about things that people don't even talk about that's needed right now because that's the elephant in the room, the stuff that we won't talk about, the things we won't be held accountable for because it's easy to put mayonnaise and band-aids on things. But every wound needs to have air for it to truly heal. And you can't get air if you got it covered up. And you wanna can eat an elephant what? One bite <laughs> at a time. <laughs> Why well, eat no elephant? Well, you, we're we going to try to, Dom. We, we're going to try to eat one together, girlfriend. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to try. You've been listening to Ordinary People with a Godly Purpose. Let's talk with Rodney and Dawn for the past. It looks like about a, uh, about 45 minutes or so. But yeah. uh, we just want everyone to know that there is a higher calling for each and every one of you. So yeah. don't sabotage your life. Sabotage. Sabotage. Once again, you've been listening to Rodney and Dawn with Ordinary People with a Godly Purpose. Dawn, give your um, g- give your chat and your uh, your oh. email or something. Yeah, friend. yeah, do that, do that, <laughs> <laughs> do that, do that. But bail me out, girl, bail me out. I, I got you, I got you. So you can reach me via email. Um, at um, discoveryhouse5 at gmail.com you can also go to my website we're actually redoing my website but you still can go on there you can contact me through there that's www.discoveryhouse.net you can also meet me on Instagram follow me on Instagram and Facebook Uh, Instagram is discoveryhouse um, underscore and you'll see the pink and purple discovery house h d h and then on uh, facebook same thing discovery house is at discovery h on facebook um and you again you'll know it's me because it's the pink um and purple d h in a house um and like he said you know write your questions or what have you if it's more personal um again email me i'll be more than happy to um share with you or what have you because it's all about us getting better and when we get better then the world is better so the more of us that we get better the better the world will be and um we just got to change our mind about how we've been doing things because some parts of our decision making is not working for us and it's not working for the people that's attached to us so we got to do better we can't be afraid to do that don't be afraid because god is with you we are with you too. Exactly, exactly. And if you want to reach out to me, that's Rodney. Uh, you can reach me at the Power Restoring at gmail.com. And if you would like to to, to um, read four books at one time, because I have two books out too called Recognizing God's Call to You. You can find that on Amazon, Books and Millions, wherever books are sold. And The Vision of Malika, which is on teen suicide. So grab our books today. Grab grab all four, right, Dawn? Grab, grab your two and grab my two. I, I didn't say anything about my book today, but uh, since you put yours out there, might as well do mine. Do better. You, know. you better, girl. <laughs> go go for it. Well, I am um, on Amazon as well. Um, my first book is called Dawn of the Day. But we'll just put my name in, Dawn Hammond. Um, my first book was Dawn of the Day. And this is 31 days of, um, I, I sent out quotes with my hashtag is Dawn of the Day. So I did 31 days of that. So each day you can just um, ponder and marinate on that and um, see how that fits in your life. And then small read. And then August 1st of 2020, um, my book book came out. And that is The Real Homecoming. It's not coming home to um, to HBCU. It's coming home to yourself. You got to get it. It's a game changer. It's a life changer. It's on Amazon as well. And you also can go through my website to purchase it as well. Hey, that's a good plug-in. So we want to make sure that everybody gets any of the material that we do have out there. And continue to believe in yourself because Jesus does also. So, well, once again, you've been listening to Ordinary People with a Godly Purpose. Let's talk with Rodney and Dawn. Until next time, we'll see you on the flip side. Yes. Have a wonderful week on purpose.